In 2007, Mini Wargaming introduced me to this hobby. Since then, I've been painting, sculpting, teaching, and even play the occasional game. In 2009, I launched my own company, Epic Duck Studios. My name is Mike Cousins, and this is the Epic Hobby. Hi, welcome to the first episode of the Epic Hobby. I'm Mike. This show is going to be a little bit different. You've probably seen my old shows, Quick and Dirty and Attention to Detail. This is going to kind of wrap those up, but it's also going to occasionally have battle reports, other things like building terrain or making tables, and just sort of let me encompass everything I love to do with this hobby. I also want to focus more this year on teaching you guys specific painting techniques rather than how to paint a whole model from start to finish. This first episode I am doing what I call large area lightning. It's a technique I came up with for working on my Necron models, which lets me paint really wide areas of lightning really easily. Now there's one other reason I haven't done a painting video in a while and I want to introduce them. This is Django. And I adopted him from the local shelter in October. He was rescued there as a stray. He's part husky and they don't know what else he is because he came in as a stray, don't know his parentage. But he's adorable. The problem is he loves to bump into the tripod when I'm painting, or rather when I'm filming my painting. He likes to just play around me and that usually involves tossing his bone or his ball or something right under the tripod and then going to get it and bumping into it. I've come up with a solution where when I'm painting I've actually got the tripod mounted to an arm that's actually suspended off my desk so it's nowhere on the floor. But even then he'll still come up and bump into the desk once in a while and create a little bit of wobble. But it's easy to edit around that. It's not so easy when he's spending the better part of an hour just bumping into a tripod while I'm trying to film. So I had a couple incidents there where I actually was trying to make a painting video over the last few months and it just wouldn't work out because of my new four-legged friend. But I've kind of got a solution to work around that. As I say, I've got a camera mounted using a clamp tripod onto an armature that basically comes out to about here, kind of looks out over my left shoulder, and I just turn the model slightly and kind of face the camera while I'm working. And it's worked out really well so far. Let's go ahead, I'm going to show you guys large area lightning, as I like to call it. You be the judge, see if this new method of filming sort of sideways over the shoulder looks really good to you guys. If you have any comments for how the video looks or something you also would like to see technique-wise, go ahead and post them below. No matter what site you're watching this on, I will find them. One other thing I'd like to address is EpicDuckStudios.com. I have not updated that website in a very long time. I've had a few comments about it. People have wondered if I'm even in the hobby anymore. I'm absolutely still doing things. I paint every day, literally every day now. My New Year's resolution was to paint something every day. And I've missed 14 days so far this year, which doesn't sound great because we're only in the middle of February, but half of that was due to a business trip and that was really unavoidable. The reason I haven't updated EpicDuckStudios.com is that I'm making a change to the way the whole website works. Epic Duck Studios was really about me selling my commission services, and because I'm now working full-time somewhere else, I don't have time to take on a lot of commissions. So I don't want to spend a lot of my website's effort selling commissions to you guys and then I get emails and I basically have to say sorry I'm too busy which is what if you contact me for a commission that's probably what you've heard from me is either I'm sorry I can't paint that many models or I'm just too busy to paint anything so I'm reorganizing completely redesigning from the ground up it will now be epicduck.com I've got that domain name and it's really going to focus on teaching showing you guys tutorials answering your questions and then showing you things I'm working on through work in progress logs and that kind of thing. And it's going to focus a lot less on my commission services because I really don't have the time to take on too many of those. But the website will be updated soon, you will see that coming. I do apologize, I haven't posted anything there in a very long time, or on Mini Wargaming either. One thing we have started on Mini Wargaming is actually kind of started through Twitter, is hashtag the daily paint. And this was part of my New Year's resolution, was to pick up a paintbrush and do something every day. And we've got a lot of other painters that are now actually involved in this too. I just want to say hi to Smyrta, Dez, and Dejin24. There's a couple other guys there too, and I'll talk about them in the next video. But these three have really taken to the daily paint, and if you look at what Smyrta's been doing on the Mini Wargaming forums, you can see a definite improvement in her painting probably just in the last five, six weeks. And it's, I want to believe it's just due to a practice makes perfect mentality. If you're picking up the brush every day and you're painting every day, 
even if it's just for five minutes, you're developing the motor skills, you're developing the muscle memory and the visual talent, and you're going to become a better painter just because you're painting that much more often. So I want to invite anyone else who's interested to join the Daily Paint. A lot of people aren't painting daily because we have jobs, we have school, whatever, but they're still trying to pick up the brush and do something a few times a week. And that's really the goal, is just to make it part of what you do on a daily or a weekly basis. Just make it so you develop the skill because you're doing it more often. So it's hashtag the daily paint on Twitter. We've got about nine or ten threads going right now on the mini wargaming war painting forum. And of course, once I'm done with epicduck.com with the redesign there, it's definitely going to be one of the main features of that site as well. And that's enough rambling from me. Let's go ahead and show you large area lightning. I'll be demonstrating the large area lightning technique on this Necron command barge. I'll be using five colors, Reaper Twilight Purple, Reaper Amethyst Purple, Reaper Pure Black, Citadel Wash Leviathan Purple, and finally Reaper Pure White. It's easy to produce this lightning effect in other colors by replacing the Twilight Purple with a dark shade of the color you'd like to use, the Amethyst Purple with a light shade you'd like to use, and then using an appropriate wash in place of the Leviathan Purple. At this point, I'm going to base coat the areas that I want to paint the lightning technique onto with my mid-tone, which is the Twilight Purple. You want to take some time and just make sure you get a good solid base coat on the entire area that you want to apply the lightning effect to. This may require you to do multiple coats of the color depending on how thin your paint is. And usually that's a good sign if your paints are thin enough that they require another coat. It also means they're less likely to obscure detail on the model. I'm only going to paint one side of the command barge in this video. The other side you can just assume will look the same when it's done. You can see I am occasionally going back and applying a second coat over areas I've already base coated. This is just to make sure that none of the silver metallic shows through. Getting the inside edge of this wing is a little bit tricky after this model has been assembled, and I do apologize it doesn't show very well on video. Now that the base coat is complete, I'm going to add a little bit of Reaper Pure Black to the Twilight Purple, just to create a slightly darker shade. You don't want to go too far here, and if you do find it becomes very dark, which is easy to do when you're adding black, go ahead and add a little bit of your base coat color back into the mix. I'm going to paint this darker shade onto the purple areas, in a sort of cow spotted pattern. These dark spots, I want to leave a gap between them, and this gap is actually what will form the shape of the lightning. So you can see I'm sort of just creating little jagged blobs with space between them that I'll layer paint lines into. Now these blobs don't need to be a consistent shape or size at all. They can be very random, have very, very jagged edges, they really don't have to look like anything. They're basically the gaps between the lightning. And the more jagged and irregular they are, the more character your lightning is actually going to have. So you don't want to end up with a sort of repeated pattern to these. You want them to look very almost organic and random. Where one of the dark blobs reach the edge of the wing, I'm going to continue it down onto the side of the wing to make sure that the shapes are continuous.
I'm then going to repeat the process on the bottom of the wing, making sure that any dark blobs that were on the side of the wing again carry across the bottom and become continuous. You can see that while I'm painting these black blobs, I'm really not paying attention to what little details are on the wing underneath them. I'm just kind of working over it as if it was a solid surface. Now that the dark blobs are done, it's time to take Amethyst Purple, our light shade, and create some streaks in between the darker blobs. I don't need very much of the Amethyst Purple paint. And I've switched out which brush I'm using. I'm now using a very long, narrow brush. And I'm loading just a very minimal amount of paint into the end of the brush. I'm making sure there's not a drop there. I just want a little bit of sort of wetness to the end of the brush. And what I'm doing is I'm painting sort of jagged, spotty lines in the light areas between the dark patches that I just created. You can see that as I'm painting the lines, I'm actually kind of shaking the brush a little bit. This makes the paint apply unevenly, so that there's some sort of darker and lighter spots to this line, and it makes it look like the energy is more intense in some areas than others. It also makes it a little bit thicker and wider, so it's not a consistent line, but it kind of breaks up and becomes thin and thick. This gives it more of the appearance of arcing electricity. Even though I'm not using very much paint, this is definitely the most time-consuming part of this process. Just like I did with the dark spots, I want to make sure that the light lines carry across from the top to the side, and then again down to the bottom. I goofed up here and dispensed a little bit of pure white before I was ready for it. There's a little bit of work left to do with the amethyst purple. What I need to do is take it and outline all the different little details as well as the edges of the wings. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and then I'll come back to the pure white momentarily. When I'm outlining the different panels of the wings and the little details that are engraved in it, I don't worry about where the dark spots are at this point. I want the outline to be very definitive and follow the whole object. This sort of creates the effect that the lightning is sort of emanating from the object itself and it's coming from the edges. Just like painting the lightning, this edge highlighting process is rather slow, but you can see that it does make the panels very distinct, and even without the white applied yet, you can very easily see the different details of this wing.
I think you've got a good grasp of the edge outlining technique at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and skip to the next part of this. Now I'm going to add some highlights to the lightning using Reaper Pure White. I'm specifically painting this in a few different areas where the lightning has reached an edge or where more than one different line of lightning has kind of met or just where a line of lightning got extra thick for some reason. Basically anywhere the lightning kind of looks stronger or thicker, I'm putting a little bit of white into the middle of it. This actually goes very quick because you're not going to do it to the whole model, you're going to pick out very selective bits to do this to. You can see that the little spots of white are really just adding emphasis to some parts of the lightning and kind of giving it more of an appearance of crackling. You'll notice that on the outside corners of many of these panels, I'm also just adding a small dot of white. This helps draw a little bit of attention to the corner and just makes it look a little bit sharper. Now that the white spots are done, I'm going to use a larger brush to apply the Leviathan Purple Wash. The wash really helps tie all the colors together. It takes a little bit of the sharpness out of the white spots, and it'll make the dark areas even deeper, which just makes the lightning stand out that much more. You can see that this step goes quite quickly, but has a very important impact on the overall appearance of the lightning. Now all that's left to do is wait for the wash to dry and the large area lightning technique is done.